Today on Ham Radio Tube, we are going to build this kit. This is from Meshnology. This is their new N39 uh, Meshtastic board. And when we're completed, it should look like this. It comes in green, black, and I think they call it Twilight Purple. And uh, yeah, they say this should take about five minutes to install. The cool thing about this, this is the newer updated V4 board that's supposed to give us a little bit more power. I think they said 27 dBm uh, versus, I don't know, something else from the other one. So let's crack this open and build ourselves a Meshtastic node. This thing's really cheap too. It's like $43.99 uh, and you get everything in it. So uh, I just, I thought it was really cool. I've personally not heard, heard of uh, Meshnology before, but they reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at it. I saw that and I'm like, that's freaking cool. It's kind of like an HT, but it's really thin. So I'm thinking um, having this on one of my portable backpacks, my ham radio bags. Look at that case. That's freaking slick, huh? Like OD green, nicely 3D printed. Very cool. So it should have all the parts in here. There's uh, all the hardware that we're gonna need to screw together. We got some foam sticky things. This does have GPS as well. So that's pretty cool. There's the board. Let's see what we got in here. I think that's, oh, that's the battery. We got a three amp hour battery. One of them, oh, it's even got a Meshnology sticker on there. 3000 milliamp, 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. They say this also has some kind of solar charging support. I think there's just another plug on the board um, where you make that happen. So there it is, look at that board. It's got a nice little uh, like cover for the screen on there. That's really nice. So let's see what we gotta do to get this installed. So on the website for this, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, there are um, kind of picture instructions for how to put this together. So that's what we're gonna follow. I don't think there's any other instructions. Uh, and I don't think we need all of this stuff either. So we might just have a box of extra parts there, which, hey, I'm fine with. So we should need the case, the coax for the antenna, the antenna, this is the GPS module, and the battery, and all this hardware. We've got some buttons and some little square things and the screws and sticky foam things. So let's have at it. So the first thing we gotta do is install the coax slash antenna connector. And I'm just going off of the Meshnology website instructions because they're really not instructions they're just kind of pictures that look exactly like this so i'm going to omit the washers because there's a little you can see it's kind of like keyed to accept the hex of this so we'll go ahead and slide this in here get it right there we are so now we can see the hex fits inside there and then i'm just going to take the nut and wrench it down like that and maybe we'll get some pliers here to just give it a little, little over tightening. And then uh, it looks in the pictures, this cable goes through this top ridge right here. So yep, yeah, we can go ahead and I think that's supposed to kind of smush in there. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Then we open up this pack of bits and bobs. I'll just pour everything out there. And it says install button. We've got two buttons. This one says V4 though, so since we're using a V4, we'll go ahead and put the V4 button in. Does it matter which way it goes in? Maybe, maybe not. So there's that, okay. There is actually a difference between these V3 and V4 if you can see, uh, the one on my right, I believe, is the V3. Yeah. So the V3 is a little bit taller. So do mind which board you're using, but there goes the V4 again. Then we're going to connect the antenna to the circuit board. So there's a tiny little coaxial plug right there. And this is always my least favorite part of assembling these Meshtastic boards. Let's see how we do. It just kind of snaps on but it's so small. There we are. Okay, that wasn't bad. So we gotta move the coax so it's pointing up and we're just gonna have a little flap hanging there. Make sure our thing doesn't go out. 
So you get the USB guy in there and it goes just in like that. And then this coax is just gonna hang there, which is fine. The GPS module is gonna go under that, but there's nothing in here that's gonna like pinch the coax. So that's fine. So then I've organized the parts here and I don't know why I have so many of these, but we're supposed to secure the board down with these smaller screws. We've got some long screws, these square things that we'll see in a bit, and then these. So I don't, maybe they just sent me a bunch of extra ones, but we're gonna put one here. And theoretically, just the size of this is gonna hold it down. And the instructions only show um, two of these. So I don't know why I have six. So that's good. Cause there is this little lip right here. It's kind of holding the board in place too there. So yeah, that looks good. Okay. So now we can tackle the GPS module, which is this guy here. And they've got two different lengths of like foam sticky stuff. So the square one, that's right. Goes in the square hole. So let's put this guy in there. Take off the other sticky side, maybe. There we are. And then the GPS module is gonna go right here. Okay. Okay, I guess we just somehow get the coax out of the way and then stick that guy I don't know what we're supposed to do with the coax. It's kind of an interesting design. And then that sticks down like that. Okay. I'll buy it. Next, we're gonna connect the battery and perhaps I should have done this earlier cause we have to connect it to this guy right here. But this is kind of blocking it. So let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that's supposed to work. So let's take this out. Now we can plug in the battery. Now let's put these screws back in. Okay, then we can take this big strip of sticky stuff, put that on the back side of the battery. And Affix like such. I guess works. Let's see if the case, we're ready to put the case on now, I guess. That freaking coax wire though. Okay. So now these little metal square things go in these slots. And then we take these longer screws and screw it down. And there should be six of those, I think. Okay. Yep, another one there. Design wise, I think those look horrible, but structural wise, I think it's a good idea. So you're not just screwing into 3D printed plastic and stripping stuff. And we've got two more on the sides. Is this thing even on? Oh yeah, it is. Look at that, this is Laura. Okay, so we're gonna have to flash this for Mashtastic, which is fine, I knew that, or expected that getting into this. We got two more of these little guys to put in. And then our antenna. And that's it. That's pretty slick looking, huh? Let's get to flashing this thing and see how it works. So here's the Meshnology page for this. If we scroll down, here's where we can see the installation instructions that we uh, made this with earlier. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we've got this uh, docs user manual. That's gonna take us to this page here. And if we scroll down, this will give you instructions 
as to how to flash the firmware. We're going to go to flasher.meshtastic.org, and we do need to use either Chrome or Edge, which I have open right here. So we're going to select our target device, go up here to Helltech, and we're going to select this Helltech V4. For version, I'm just going to pick the newest alpha version, and then we're going to hit Flash, and we can scroll all the way down, hit Continue, and I'm going to erase and install the whole thing, so we'll check that. And uh, then we'll hit erase and flash. And now we need to find which port it is and I don't see it probably because the thing's not plugged in. Plug in your device. And there it is that JTAG one right there. Go ahead and hit connect and there it is doing the thing. So this will take a few minutes and when it's done, I'll come back. And there we are, flashing is done. It says welcome to Meshtastic. And this is what it looks like after flashing. You get this welcome to Meshtastic. Click to navigate and long press to select or open a menu. So we're gonna long press this top button here. And it looks like we can select uh, what region, presumably long press that again. So we've just selected the region. You might be able to configure this all on the device, but I am going to switch over to my phone, which will be exponentially easier. But there it is after we just selected US and uh, it rebooted. So let's hop over to the phone. Now we can open our Meshtastic app and it'll scan for Bluetooth and we can see that is the one right there. And it's gonna ask us to pair. Now usually the password is just one, two, three, four, five, six, but this one actually gives us uh, the pairing code right on the device. So nine, two, one, eight, four, seven. And you can change that later, which I will and then hit pair, and it'll pair with the Bluetooth. There, we're receiving nodes. Great, so that's paired. Now let's go over to settings, and we wanna configure this for ourselves. So we're gonna go here to user, and we can give this a long name, and I'll just call this ham radio tube N39, and a short name, I don't know, HRT, sure, why not? And then we can hit save. Save user configuration. That's going to reboot the device. It is rebooting. And once that's done, we can move on to the next step. Next, I'm going to go to device. Just make sure this is set up as client. I do want to use this as client. And everything else looks good. I am in central time, so that's good. Under position, let's just check and make sure everything's good there. Smart position, sure, we'll use that. 30 seconds. GPS is enabled. Update interval, two minutes, I'm fine with that. That's fine, everything looks good here, so that's cool. This should be pretty plug and play. External notifications, let's make sure we don't uh, <laughs> drive ourselves crazy, they're all off. That's fine. I'm actually gonna turn dilution of precision off on this one, cause, I don't know, I kinda feel like having it just know exactly where I am. So, yeah, we'll rock that. Usually I do have that on though. We'll let that reboot. And under external notifications, this nag timeout. I don't think this has a speaker, but we'll put that on one second just in case, in case there is some kind of audible alert. I don't know, I'd like to hear that. I have that on my Seed Studio T1000. Uh, so we'll see if that ever works. But that should be about it. We should be ready to rock and roll. And if we head over to nodes, there are all the nodes that we're currently hearing right now. So that's the N39, that's another guy in the area, that's another one of my nodes, that's my uh, Seed Studio, and that is the uh, node that I have on my roof there. So, let's see if we can send a message. Let's send a direct message to that one there, and let's just say, hi Mike, and hit send. And there it goes. It is working. So now let's disconnect from this guy and connect to Seed Studio 1. And there is our message. It's working. That's pretty neat. And let's message back hello to you, Mike. Let's see what this thing does. 
Yeah, there it goes right there. See it right on the screen. The screen's kind of dim though. It's not nearly as bright. Here's another one just for comparison. So not that it's a big deal for me. I, I mean, who uses the little screens on these things? But I'll show you around because this actually is uh, does have some pretty neat information on it. All right, so I just ran outside just to see if the GPS works, and it took a few seconds, but you can see, in fact, I know it's kind of shaking on camera there, but I think we've got six satellites that uh, it has picked up. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, again, this screen uh, is almost impossible to see outside here in the sunlight. It's almost impossible to see uh, even inside, but yeah, as we zoom in there, there you can see that is in fact my GPS position. So it works. And now that I'm back inside messing around with this thing, I was cycling through, you hit the top button and you can cycle through here. And you can actually do a lot of stuff just from here. So if you just long press on this, you'll get a bunch of different options. It's so like if you wanna do a trace route or add favorite or something, you just short press it again and then you long press it to get into whatever setting it is. So for example, I'm gonna go back, so I'm just gonna long press this. I'm gonna hit the button again and I'm gonna to go to uh, system. Maybe these buttons aren't very responsive. There we are. And we're going to long press more on system. There are our screen settings. These buttons are not very responsive, but there's the screen options. We can long press again and then we can see there's the brightness thing. Whoops. And then select brightness, long press. And now it's on high, it was on by default, it came on medium, but we can go low, medium or high, and then long press and select that, that's high. And just to compare it, like that's still pretty dim. There's my other Mesh-tastic node with a screen, a lot more uh, readable, but that's how you change the uh, screen settings on here. So there we are, overall, this thing is freaking cool. I really liked, I mean, it's like a little walkie-talkie thing, but it's a mesh-tastic thing. I had a little bit of a struggle putting it together following the instructions, but that's probably more me than them, but it would be nice to see them kind of expand a little bit on the instructions or just give us a little bit better images. Uh, but flashing it was very painless. I didn't even have to go into like any bootloader or anything. You literally just plug it in, flash it, be done with it. GPS works just fine. Everything's good. So the only thing, the one thing I did do that I didn't do on camera, I went back into the settings on the app and I went to the display settings and just converted it to Imperial as it was by default in metric. Everything works great. You got a nice little hole there, put a little carabiner or something, hang it from a bag. Build quality, fantastic. And the price, kind of hard to beat at like $44 for everything, like turnkey, just done and done. I think they got a cool little product here. So I'll leave a link in the description. Meshnology, thanks so much for sending this out to me. And uh, we will see you guys next time on another episode of Ham Radio Tube 73.